Hey, my name is Terry Sproul, and I want to welcome you to my studio. Tonight is our live Tuesday night live class. It's um, art journaling, and tonight I'm going to actually teach you how to make an art journal. Um, for you guys who are on my YouTube channel, I really appreciate you. Give me a thumbs up and subscribe, and think about joining me in the future on a Tuesday night. Now, normally I do have somebody helping out and hosting with me and putting all the links over on the Google Plus page and the YouTube page, but I'm alone tonight. Um, he might pop in, but we never know. Right now he's not here, so <laughs> I'm alone. So I want to let you know that in advance. I'm going to do my best to save the, um, the links out loud and spell everything. But most everything I bought except for one item was purchased at Michael's. So really you can do everything at Michael's and then that one particular um, um, item that you might need to buy later, I actually have a coupon for you. So make sure you stay around for that coupon, okay? Okay, I'm excited about being here as always. Okay, I'm going to change cameras and we're going to get down to my desktop. I'm going to apologize in advance. I burnt out a light this week, so it's on order, not here, so my lighting's not great. So, Okay, we're down here at my desk. I'm going to do a little moving of the lights here, see if I can get that a little better. Okay. What I want to teach you guys tonight is how to make your own art journals. Oh, let me take down that logo. Sorry about that. And that was my blog down there. So if you guys, I will be putting all the links up on my um, blog tomorrow for um, everything that we use tonight. So, um, oh, I appreciate that. I appreciate you guys who can help me out and put the links up there. But really, there ain't a whole lot, but I really appreciate anybody who can type that out for me. It'd be great. So anyways, I made a couple art journals this week. And these are super easy to make. And um, what's great about it is, oh, I have that one upside down, is you've got nice thick paper in here, and you can do a lot of um, journaling in here, and you can decorate it your own way. And this is a super, super cheap way to make art journals, and they're really, really going to be a good art journal for you. So let me um, take these two away. These are the two I made. I made this one and this one this week. And I'm going to make one more tonight. But what we're going to do tonight is we're going to make it just a little bit different by adding some um, extra pages in. And you'll, expl you'll understand that here in a minute. Okay. First thing, I, first thing you need to do is find um, some watercolor paper. Now, when you go look for watercolor paper, what I want you to do is look at the poundage. That's down here in the corner usually. Some of them have them in different places. But when you look for your paper, look for that poundage. Try to find something that's at least 140 pound um, weight or 300 grams. That's really a nice thick paper and it's really going to help you out a lot in getting a nice journal. I got lucky. Michael's had these on sale last week where if I bought one, I got a second one for half price. And I used my 50% off coupon, so I got a great deal. So definitely um, look out for that. So I'm what I end up doing is I pulled out um, the amount of papers that I need, and I'll explain that here in the future. Um, here in the future. Few. I'm going to start off right off the bat using studio cloth because I want to get my cover made and then after I get my cover made then we can put that off to the side and we'll work on signatures. So this is the, the only piece of um, item that I did not get at Michael's and this is at US Art Quest and that's US -A -R -T -Q -U -E -S -T dot com and it's called Studio Cloth, okay? So U.S. Art Quest Studio Cloth. And it's it's a kind of a thick, kind of canvasy type material. Because you can hear how it has that canvas kind of sound. And it's not going to rip when you cut it. It doesn't um, fray. So it's a really fun product to work with. And I've actually used it for many projects, but... Tonight, I'm going to use it for my cover. So when you cut your piece of studio cloth, and I apologize, I'm putting a white piece of paper on top of white, but I think you guys can see that. What you're going to need to do 
is this is a, a designer's choice at this point. I like to make mine the exact same width or height of my paper, but I make it a little longer. Now you need it longer over here because of the signatures that you're going to sew into them in the future. So that's why you would do that. Okay. Um, and you could even make it extra long and have your book. Mine, as you'll see, my pages kind of end right at the, you know, the end of the book or my cover is right at the end of the book. You could make it longer and put two like eyelets in there and then run a ribbon through the eyelets. There's lots of ideas that you can do. So once you've learned this technique, have fun with the covers, okay? That was my whole point of that whole conversation. So I cut out a piece of studio cloth, the same height as my piece of paper that I'm using for my signatures, and about an inch-ish more. Because I don't measure, sorry, I don't. And then from here, you can do whatever you want on your covers. Um, I'm going to start off with using Radiant Rains. Um, and these are from uh, Color Art. And that's C O L O U. No, yeah, O U R A R T E dot com. And they are called Radiant Rains. And they're like a mist. Um, product that's out there and I just got I'm you know you can't go wrong if you use the um, three primary colors I've talked to you guys about this before red yellow and blue are primary colors if you use primary colors they will blend and mix perfectly first thing I like to do is and this is kind of a choice thing again I like to get my piece of paper wet, um, my studio cloth wet and the reason I like to get it wet is because then my um, colors will bleed a little more and um, that's kind of what I want it to do. So I'm just going to real quickly just put some col um, color down. Nothing fancy. Not even going to think. So all these colors that I'm using will blend and make different colors really well. So And actually, you know, it's funny. Danielle... Um, I was thinking about you today because I was thinking how much I would love to have your um, stamps today. I'm grabbing a baby wipe for myself because I got my hands all wet. Um, how I would love to have taken your stamps and stamped all over the front of this and then colored it in. But I don't have them yet. Now, I did do my cover front and back. So once I got this side done... just get this dry real quick here I'm gonna let that be the inside of my book so I'm just gonna flip it over and I'm gonna spray the outside or the inside or the outside whatever I'm spraying the other side <laughs> again with just some radiant rains and again I'm using the uh, primary colors because it makes it easy I don't have to think. And this one clogged on me here. Let's see if I can get it to unclog. Not probably not going to work. I'm probably going to need to go get some water and put it through it. But let's try one more thing. Nope, that one's clogged. When you do get yours clogged, what you need to do is go and run it through some water. But that's okay. I'm just going to leave it. We're just going to have it yellow and blue. It's okay, because we know I don't stress on this stuff. Thank you for putting that up there, usartquest.com. She put that link up there, and again, I will have that link um, tomorrow in my blog also. So I'm just cleaning up my desk a little bit. I'm going to spray this with some, or dry it just a tad. Now, my other two, I actually just left the covers as is. 
But I thought tonight I would have some fun and just get some stamps out and do some stamping. This is why I was saying, Danielle, I really needed your stamps today. But I didn't get them in the mail yet. Well, actually, they might have came today. But I didn't go to the mailbox because I'm lazy. But I did get, I want you guys all to know that today I got done with the... Um, napkin swap so you guys who put in some napkins into the napkin swap sorry i'm doing this towards me and not towards you which i usually do um that will be going into the mail tomorrow so we got some beautiful napkins oh my god some of you guys sent some ones that were just gorgeous remember to always stamp off your page and I'm using just black Indian ink for this right now, but I am going to use some stays on for this particular stamp in green. And these are um, the pansy was from um, Impression Obsession. And this one, you know, I'm not even sure. I think it is because i've had this stamp forever i think it is um call i'm drawing a blank it might come to me here in a minute give me a second it might come to me but it's a uh dandelions but i've got dandelions coming next week so i have the coolest project for that dandelion um stamp set that should be in the mail so if you pre-ordered it it should be coming to you any day now i'm expecting mine any day now isn't that just look how pretty this is and just a matter of seconds all i'm doing is throwing some stamps on there now i am going to turn around to me on this one just because i want to get this one a little perfect I want to let this all dry while I'm um, painting or uh, putting the signatures together. Oh, I forgot to grab a, a uh, brush. So give me a second here while I grab a paintbrush. So I forgot I was going to paint tonight too. So I wanted to use um, silks. And these are from Color Art again. There they are. Silk acrylic glazes. These are from Color Art, which is colorart.com, spelled the French way. And I just wanted to color these pansies in. Now, because you are working on studio cloth, it can bleed just a tiny bit with the paint. So you might want to stay a little in the lines so that when it bleeds, it bleeds out a little bit. You know what I'm saying? It's a really good tip if you have something that's going to bleed. To let it bleed, but just let it bleed out. And it would probably help if I got my page a little drier. So if you are doing this at home and you wanted to do all this stamping, I would probably let my studio cloth completely dry and mine is still damp because I can feel it under my hand um, completely dry and you'll probably have less bleeding than I'm having okay so you know how the teacher is do as our mom is do as I say not as do as I say not as I do is that how it goes yeah <laughs> so because see how it's bleeding out there just a little bit? But that's okay. I know it's a pretty stamp, isn't it? I can't wait for my dandelions to come next week. So yeah, if I got this a little drier, it would probably give me less problems. And actually... I just seen that Miss Leslie just popped in the room. Miss Leslie is the manufacturer and the brains behind these beautiful paints, by the way. So, thank you, Miss Leslie, for taking care of these and making them for us because we all love them. 
So again, since I'm kind of uh, still a little wet, I am going to go outside the uh, inside the lines a little. Okay, so let's kind of go on. Whose stamps am I using? Um, the the um, this one right here is from Stamp uh, Oppression Obsession. This one is Oppression Obsession, and that one is I'm still drawing a blank. And it's a well-known company, and I'm just drawing a blank on them. I'll get it in a minute here, sick guys. I will remember. Probably five seconds after I turn off the um, channel here. So, okay, one more here to... To do and then we will go on actually I want to do the black on that too so hold on I got two more things to do see I'm not I'm getting less bleeding over here because it's more dry so again you'll have no bleeding if you allow your studio cloth to not be wet again me bad And it's definitely wetter over here than it is on that side. Okay, so I will continue to, um, you know, decorate that cover. And I would suggest that you do it um, while your cover is not, you haven't sewn it in yet. Because it really is a lot easier to do the cover now. But I wouldn't, and we've talked about this before, I wouldn't do anything majorly 3D at this point. And the reason I wouldn't do that is because then you're, um, when you're trying to do your art journal and you have it, you got it open, you're not going to have that evenness on the bottom. So make sure you take care of yourself on that. Okay, super pretty. Okay, now let's let this dry. And let's work on signatures. Now, I did a lot of work off camera because I didn't want you guys to just sit here and watch me fold paper because how boring would that be? Okay. So, but I wanted to add something besides just paper into my um, art journal this time. So you could have a lot of fun at this point. You could get yourself some really large tags to add into your journal. Um, when I was going through my stuff, I found these. These are nine by six um, envelopes. So they're kind of a, you know, just like an envelope. And I thought because this is going to be doubled, because you're going to fold it in half, it would be thicker than, you know, just regular paper. So it would be pretty good. Um, Leslie, somebody's trying to. No, it's not Stampendous. It's. <laughs> Damn. God, I, I'm totally drawing a blank, and I, I swear it's like sitting right there in the tip of my tongue. Okay, so what you're going to do is, and like I said, I did a lot of this folding off camera. You're going to take your um, large piece of paper, and you're going to fold it in half. Now, fold each of your pieces of paper in half individually. And the reason for that is if because if you take four pieces of paper, especially thick paper, and you fold it in half, you're not going to get a clean edge up here, meaning it'll be kind of off. You know what I'm saying? They won't line up nicely. So if you fold each of them individually and make sure you take a bone, bone folder and get a nice crisp fold, because this is really thick paper, and then put them inside of each other. I am using four pieces of paper for each signature. What what is a signature? Signatures are another one of those big fancy words that I tell you guys that you really don't need to know. Basically, what a signature is, is in a book, when you look down a book, there are individual sections. That's a signature. Each section is sewn into a book. Um, you, can't, you couldn't actually book, hello, Barbara Rankin. Um, you couldn't actually make a book that had a bunch of papers in it like this. Okay, see the problem? See that right there? That's why you can't do it. So that's why you make signatures. 
So my signatures are four pieces of paper each, which is eight um, folded. So and times three, I got 24 pieces. But I want to add in these envelopes also. So I took the envelope again just like this and again this is your choice on how many you want to do at this point you can have them every page you can have them every other page you could have just one or two in the book whatever you want to do so again I've got a nice clean fold of my envelopes I think I am going to do say every other page so I'm going to grab my first signature and I'm going to put one in there. I'm going to skip that page and put one in here. And then skip that page. So I got two that I put into that signature. This signature, I think I'm going to probably do the same. Skip that one, put one there. And the last one, last signature. And you can put as many signatures as you want in. Um, just remember that when you're doing that part, you need to make that cover, the studio cloth cover, to be a little um, longer because you're going to need the room for the... Uh, and I'm going to put one there. Okay. You're going to need the room for your uh, extra pages, for all these pages. Because see how much, I know that glare is really bad, but you see how much room that's going to take extra in my book? Okay. Now, you need to make yourself a template. When you make yourself a template, you want your template to be the same height as your piece of paper that you're using. So everybody's template is going to be a little different. Okay, but it needs to be the same height. It does not need to be the same width, but at least the same height. So we got our template. Then I take that piece of paper, I fold it in half. I open it back up. Now you could measure. I admit I am not a measurer, but you can if you want to. Um, but you need to make four holes along that spine that are somewhat evenly um you know, across there, and it needs to be an even number. So if you're doing a smaller book, book you could actually, you know, do four of them longer. If you have a really long book, sorry, my hands aren't there. there. So picture this longer, <laughs> really long book, you might want to put six holes. But whatever you're doing, it needs to be an even number of holes. Okay? Simple to remember. Okay, so. Oh. Also on your template, this is important. See how I have the word top up there? And the reason for that, and I'll explain it as we go along, is it keeps everything organized. You'll appreciate yourself if you, you know, take care of that. Okay, I need to find my awe oh, here. Mm -hmm. It's just sitting here a second ago. We can't do anything without it, so... I do love, there it is. Love when things are like right in front of me and I can't see them. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to open up your book. Now if you have these little these little pieces of papers in them, you're going to make sure that they are sitting in the center. So you've got to make sure everything's lined up. Okay. And also, the other thing that's going to be important, when you're making your template, you need to make sure that you're going to get at least two holes through this smaller piece of paper. So if you had a tag in there, like this tag, see how that would, my holes are right. You kind of see, see how my holes would not fit onto that tag. So think about what you're putting in there. Hopefully, everybody understands that. If you don't, let me know right away, okay? And I'll explain that again. So I'll give you guys a few seconds to catch up to me there. 
Okay. Now, this is a choice thing. I use these um, alligator clips or whatever they're called just to help me remember that this is my top. <laughs> Seriously, that's how I do it. I know it seems weird, but it's just my, my mental thing that top, 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 everything's top. And I'll explain that again, why we're doing that. So you need to make sure your, all your paper are in there evenly. You're going to put your template down, making sure your tops match, top, top. And then you're going to put your awe through. Now, it's up to you. You can take a pen and put marks and then put your awe through. You can go right through. It's really however you feel comfortable as the person who's making the book together. Um, and again, it's up to you how you want to try to put your holes through. Some people take a... Um, some type of book can put it down there for them to poke through. I just take it to the side and just go through. It's probably not the safest way, but that's the way I work. So I'm putting my four holes into my center. So you guys are hopefully seeing that. And I'm going all the way through to the other side. And yeah, this does take a little muscle. But it's worth it in the long run. And please be careful. Don't hurt yourself. I do have this video out also on the internet on my YouTube channel. So if you want to go check that out, you can. But it didn't show how to put the uh, extra things in there. Okay, so there's my first signature all ready for me to go. So I'm going to close that up and grab my book. I need to dry this a little more because it's still wet. Unity. The stamp is from Unity. I told you it come to me. <laughs> Okay, now what you want to do is you want to fold your book in half, your cover in half, and I do crease this because I want to be able to see that, that center. Now it is studio cloth, it's really not going to hold the, um, the crease for very long to be honest because it's you know basically fabric but it's going to be enough for you to be able to see it see so that's all that matters now my top my top remember that's important and this is the reason for that is all your holes will line up and what i'm going to do is i'm going to put my center spine on my on that line that i just made and I'm going to mark my four holes. Now, if I didn't have my top and my top lined up, those holes could be in different spots and would not match my signature. Okay? That's the reason for that. Again, keep losing my awe because I keep putting something over it. I'm going to poke the hole for my first. So then you take your awe and you're going to poke those four holes. Again, be careful. Don't hurt yourself. You can use um, a paper piercer, but something that's going to be able to go through those holes very well. Okay. Now at this point, you want to do two more sets of holes because remember we have three signatures. So I'm going to go over probably and i don't measure i'm going to say about oh a sixteenth of an inch from the holes i just made 
and I'm going to do it on each side. So I got ones on this side, and now I'm going to go over to this side and do, oh, that one needs to be a little closer, but when I make the hole is all that matters. It doesn't matter what my pencil marks are. So now I have three sets of holes, or three sets of marks right now. I will have three sets of holes in a minute going down there. So everybody understand? Everybody with me? Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and poke these holes. So now I have, by when I'm done here, I will have all of my holes made for my signatures. Oh. Get your piece. Get your um, self a piece of paper and a pen out because I have a coupon for you for the studio cloth. Okay, so studio cloth, I have a coupon for you. So now we have all of our holes in there. Okay, I'm gonna real quickly take this off to the side. This is the one we just did, and I'm gonna poke the holes in this one and the last one that fell on the floor. <laughs> Again, where's my cheat? I call these my cheats. So get yourself a pen and paper out, and I'm going to give you a coupon. This coupon is only good for one week. So please use it so you can get your studio cloth at a better price than, you know, paying full, full retail for it. Okay, so I'm going to give you that coupon code, so hopefully everybody's ready, and I will repeat it again. And this is for US Art Quest, which is usartquest.com. Today's date is 512, so it's good for one week, so that will be good till next Monday or Tuesday. I'm not sure how she's going to do that. So I'm poking the same four holes that we did a few minutes ago. Okay, the coupon code is Terry, T-E-R-R-I, the number five, and the number one, and the number two. So again, I'm going to repeat that. Terry, T-E-R-R-I, the number five, the number one, and the number two. And that's good for one week. And it's good for 20% off your total order. So you don't necessarily just have to get studio cloth while you're there. But you can. Oh, thank you. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate that. Again, I'm putting my little cheat up there. Oh, let me make sure my... Making sure my... Uh, my inserts are all lined up, and they are. Top, top, remember. <laughs> I know that's, I know I keep repeating that, but trust me, it makes it a lot easier if your pages <laughs> line up. <laughs> and I know I'm kind of repeating myself here. I should have did all this prior. So um, definitely check out. Did you search for an awe? Um, you can get your awes out of your husband's um, workshop. I'm sure he's got one. <laughs> Just don't tell him you're stealing it. My husband always comes looking for tools in my shop because I usually have them all. Okay, last hole. And then we're going to start sewing. Oh, go through there. Oh, there we go. Okay. Where's my cover? Okay. Cover. Now, what you're going to need to pick up at Michael's, and it's in the leather section. So I'm going to make it easy for you guys. You don't even have to go search for it. And I found the leather section near the jewelry. So if that helps you some. You're going to need um, two things. One, these are really heavy-duty um, 
needles and they're actually a leather needle it actually says leather there i know you can barely read that but it really does and they've got a really large um eye eye there uh, you can kind of see that see that okay and in the exact same section and i found it right next to each other so it made it really easy um you're going to need waxed thread waxed thread it does come in different colors i did choose to do this kind of creamish now for camera's sake i probably should have done black but you know i didn't so i apologize now the way you figure out how much of your wax um thread you're going to need you're going to need two lengths I always do three and the reason I do three is because I like to have something hanging off my book you know I like to have stuff hanging and most of us do so if you're like me go for that third if you want it to be exact and you don't plan on hanging anything from it then you technically only need two if you are thrifty okay so the way you figure that out is it's the height of your your pages not technically your cover your pages so i'm going to go one i'm going to go two and i am going to go for that third one and i do find that that is extra long but so really if you want to be a little thriftier and you still want to have a little of your um you know thread left over you probably really could get away with two and a half but you know i just go for that third one and i i didn't find that wax thread overly expensive to be honest um and if you are like me you know where your 40 percent off coupon is every week for michael's okay okay now when you do your wax thread you do not tie any knots in it okay you just fold it over like that you put no knots down here no knots anywhere so there's no knots in my thread it's just folded over i'm going to grab my first signature this one and i know that this is the top of my book and this is the top of my signature because i marked it and i know that that should line up and they do my holes and my pages line up i now this can be a choice thing i start with the middle and then work on the two sides do whatever you find the easiest i find it easiest to put the center one in and then work um through to the other two okay you're going to start on the outside of your book on the top hole so remember we have four holes and we have three sets of holes so we're going to work in the center hole top so you're going to go in from the inside first or excuse me the outside first just trying to find the center of my book okay so i'm going to go in through this first hole all the way through my pages making sure you come out this you know all the way through and you you know you're not in between your pages make sure you're in the center of your fold pull that through you're going to leave yourself a tail out here um i don't leave a very long tail i leave about maybe that long because i'll have the length later on Oh, Leslie just put up a coupon for us also. Thank you, Leslie. So um, color art, it's good for 10 days. It's 20% off and it's art by Terry Sproul. All one word, all in little letters. Okay. So we've gone from the outside to the inside cover. Sorry about that blur. It'll, there it goes. Now we're going to go down to the second hole and we're going to go through that second hole all the way out. To the outside cover okay now so I pulled that through now you need to make sure your book and everything is staying taut 
our instinct is to pull this way. You can't do that for two reasons. One, we have no tie down on this one. And two, if you pull this way, it rips. So you need to pull this way. So take your string and pull this way. See how I'm doing that? And I've got a nice tight binding going. Now I'm going to go all the way down to the third hole. I'm going through that center hole, through my book, hopefully catching all my pieces of paper. Sorry, I didn't mean to be off camera there. My book was just taking off and I was trying to find it. Okay, can't find it. Having problems grabbing that third hole. <laughs> it's through three of them. Come on, baby, go in there. There it is. Okay. So through that third hole. Again, making sure I'm nice and taut. So I'm going to pull this way again. Remember? So I'm in the center now. I'm going to go through that fourth hole. And all the way through again. Okay. Again, making sure I've got a nice tight bound there. So now we're halfway through, believe it or not. Now we're going to go back up. We're going to go in the exact same holes we've been going in through. Don't go through any of the other holes. So I'm going to go back through to the third hole, through to the center, and pull. Through to the second. Okay, now we're back up to the first hole. See that? And see, that's why I was saying we have lots of extra strings. So you don't have to worry about that. So you really could get away with the two. At this point, you're going to make a square knot, making sure you're all nice and tight right here at the end. Now I have a nice, good knot right there. And I don't cut any of this off until I figure out what I'm going to do with it. So you see what I was saying about you really could get away with two and a half. So now we have our first signature in our book. So I want to show you that before I go on. Open that up. And then you're also going to see the little inclusions that I added into the book. that and there's our center all the way through the whole book okay next signature and again this is kind of up to you how you want to work you can start on this side or you can start you know add it to this side it really is up to you however you want to work so wax thread I'm going to do two and a half times this time just to show you guys. So there's one. There's two. And eh, a half plus a little. Thread my needle. I always find this to be the hardest part. <laughs> oh. Miko actually even brought us a coupon for Michael's. You rock, Miko. <laughs> we might just have to fire Mr. Joseph. <laughs> so again, you're putting it through. You're not putting a knot in it. You're just leaving a little bit of a tail. And this wax thread, really, when you fold it over, it kind of just like molds to itself. So it's really easy to work with. No knot down there. So just a reminder. Taking my cheat off. Knowing that this is the top, this is the top. I'm going to go in the very top hole. Through to my top hole on my pages. So we're going to pull this all the way through. Leaving, um, you know, a little tail. Doesn't have to be too long. About that. About, you know, a couple inches is good. Through the second hole. 
through the second hole of your studio cloth, your cover. Again, reminder that you pull sideways, you get a nice tight bind down to your third hole. Again, giving it a nice pull to give a nice tight bind. That's probably the most important thing. I know I keep repeating myself on that, and it's because it really does make a difference in your book. You don't want your pages to be wonky, for lack of a better word. You want them to sit in there nice and tight. So again, I'm making sure I'm pulling sideways, get it nice and tight. Going up through number three. Oh, go in the hole. <laughs> Sometimes, oh, nope. Sorry, guys, I don't mean to be off camera, but I'm having trouble getting it in the hole, so I want to get it right. There it goes. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so through number three, through number two, and again, we're back to the top. So again, look how much string I have left over, and I'm going to tie it in a square knot, again making sure I'm nice and tight. This is always harder to do on camera than it is in person because when you're in person you can pull this a little closer to you and, and get a you know do it better I'm trying to keep it under the camera here so so there's number two so I want you to see that and I know that this would show so much better if I didn't did it in black but that's actually not a bad view right there see that okay last one signature number three Now, I always leave enough um, string for to be able to hang multiple things on there, but if you don't want to, again, so we've got one, two, and a little. And like I said, I work, I put the center in, and then I do the two signatures on each side. And if I was going to continue to work and put, like, say, more signatures in, say I wanted to make a really big book, I probably wouldn't for an art journal because, you know, these pages grow, as you know. But if I was doing maybe a journal that I'm just going to write in, um, I might put a few more signatures in it. I would just keep working like I am. I would add another one over here, and then I would keep going back and forth and keep adding it. Okay, so top of my journal, top of my page, because there's my cheat. This one's going to be a little harder because I have that signature, that one signature, or yeah, that one enclosure coming out. So I'm going to go in my top hole. And into my signature. Has there been any questions? I'm not seeing a whole lot, so I'm hoping that um, we're not catching any questions. Hold on. My signature is falling apart on me here. So if you guys have a question, just let me know. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm doing my best to catch them. I'm not seeing anything over on YouTube either, so I'm hoping everything's good. Okay, so all the way back over here, and this is, it gets more unruly as you go along. I've got to find my, which, which string I'm working on here. There it is. Okay, so it's this string that I'm working on. I wanted to see how much of a tail I had here. 
that's probably good okay so back through hole number two See what I was saying about it kind of gets unruly if you definitely if you kept going and putting more and more in there it would definitely get more and more unruly to work with getting a nice tight bind again making sure I'm finding the right hey I know what I can do <laughs> I'm gonna clip these together so I know that they're not the ones I'm working with hey I'm getting smart look at that okay through to number three. Hole number three. Hole number three. Okay, so hole number three. And then back down to hole number four. Okay, hole number four. Can again, I'm going to give it a really good pull here. Make sure I get it nice and tight. Okay, nice, good, tight bind there. Well, thank you, Dean. Appreciate that. Back through to number three. I know we're kind of repeating ourselves here. So at this point, if anybody leaves, I get it. But I hope you understand how to make your own journal now with fun pages attached. Oh my God, it's almost five, it's almost been an hour. Okay. So again, through, through number two. We're almost done, guys. Back up to number one. So remember, number one, we just tie. So at this point, I can take my needle off. Tie myself a knot right here. Nice heavy-duty knot. Okay, again, there's my extra string. Let me take off all these. So these are all my extra strings that I can... Um, you know do something with later I can cut off add ribbons to but our journal is done I want to show you it real quick and then we are done I'm gonna paint a little more on the front I'm gonna paint my butterfly I want you to see how it's bound I want you to see in between the signatures too so okay actually let's look from the top see how the signatures are see isn't that cool see that's what it looks like from the top okay here's from the side I'm actually going to add this really cool. I got this really cool piece from um, um, creatingwithdetails.com. I'm going to put that on as my binder. I'm going to put that through there. And then I think I'm going to add a ribbon or something. I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to do that. But I want to show you in between signatures too. There we go. So this is a signature and this is a signature. You could actually go a little closer if you want. And there's in between those two. So there you go. Is there any questions on how to make your own art journal now? I'm just going to, this one actually has a brad on it, so I'm just going to put a hole there, put that through, and then I'm going to add some ribbon on it. Actually, I kind of like it the way it is. I might not. I might just put a ribbon around the whole thing, <laughs> even though I do think that's a really cool piece of metal. Okay, is there any questions before I switch cameras? I'm not seeing a whole lot going on over here, so I'm assuming not. Um, looks like it's all good. 
Hmm. Okay, I'm going to check one more time over here, see if there's any more questions before I hang up. I'm refreshing my page real quick to make sure. Looks like none. Okay, so I'm going to switch cameras and say good night. Oh, sorry again about all the funky color uh, lights here. I, I got a light burnt out, so now I'm trying to figure out what to do. <laughs> well, actually, I know what to do. I have to. I have it on order, but it's just not here yet. So again, I want to thank you. Um, we had two great coupons tonight. Thank you, Leslie, for giving us a um, coupon. Um, Art by Terry Sproul, 20% off of your total order. Or U.S. Art Quest, it's Terry 512, good for 20% off your order. So you can get yourself some studio cloth, and then you can get yourself some paints. And you can make the same journal I just made. So go make yourself one. You guys are all welcome. Thank you. I appreciate all of you showing up here. I appreciate the thumbs up, and I really, really appreciate those subscriptions. <laughs> Thank you, and tell your friends about me. You guys all have a great night. I'll see you next Tuesday. Bye. And we'll be working in our new journal. <laughs>